Oh, everyone, thank you for sticking with me. I'm 14 minutes late. I haven't missed any of my scheduled uh, live streams until right now. We're doing a 90s comic book haul. What just happened? Look, every time you do this live stream stuff, you have to embrace the madness. You have to embrace all these little things that could be happening. This was no different. Uh, complete computer crash, complete browser crash. Uh, I don't know. StreamYard seems to run a couple of things in the background that uh, prevents me from doing some of my other stuff. So I left this here. Quick preview of what's in store. I, I'm like I'm essentially rebuilding my comic book collection. So I got these for nothing, but these are new stained. And I look. I don't have a lot of text, like you know. Uh, time with the image comic newsstands the textile aspect of these is very different so we're going to talk about these in a couple seconds we have a really big stack to go to go through but let's let's do some promotion so as you can see everywhere on the page is trial by fire this is one of the the big reveal i guess reveal because we never seen pitbull get damaged before pitbull is the guy on your far right of the screen we're also drinky, drinky here. Cheers. Yeah, and yeah, I've just been rocking and rolling, knocking this page out, chipping away at it. Next page is ready to go. So that's available right now on Indiegogo. Right, also too available on Etsy is Uzi Susie. This is my Urban Violence mini comic. All go, no quit. Uh, <laughs> this is 18 plus, not for the faint of heart. Uzi Susie on Etsy right now. Uh, don't mind this. This is my block paper. Coming up tomorrow. Coming up tomorrow. Anyone that follows me knows we are pretty big on Wildstorm Wednesday. So this is not tomorrow, but this is upcoming. We'll be doing Wildcats, Thundercats. <laughs> Wildstorm Thundercats. But some of these awesome crossovers. You know, people forget about these crossovers. So, and I'm missing the fourth one, which was Gen 13 Superman. Really cool stuff. So we got that coming up for Wildstorm Wednesday. That will be tomorrow. But tomorrow's coup de gras is the Wildstorm Gallery box break. So I'm going to start doing really cool things with these. Uh, you can be, you can purchase packs, you can purchase boxes. Uh, it all might be through. <laughs> Marvel did not ruin comics in the 90s. No one ruined anything in the 90s. Uh, Alexander, uh, this, these are some of the low-hanging fruit concepts that have destroyed a generation of comic book creators. Uh, but real quick, coming up tomorrow, we will be cracking this open. So I'm thinking of doing... Uh, so, like, we'll have some type of system for people to be able to purchase packs and whatever, like, you know, whatever I open, you'll be able to keep. But for now, we're just going to do boxes. We got, uh, I have five boxes, five separate series, five separate boxes already queued up. So let's get through this stack, okay? Look, just, just to give you a little bit of a preview, I got four, four stacks like this. I paid uh, maybe maybe 60 bucks for about 200 comics. Uh, right, maybe 200. I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't count them. But I didn't spend a lot of money. So, as I said, I'm rebuilding my comic collection. I had to get these because they were new stained. And if you're just not familiar with the difference between image direct and image newsstand is that these a 1000% have that, that newsstand texture and the coloring really carries over. I'm curious to maybe compare to see if some of the coloring was toned down for the new newsstand print run. So this is also one of the few times we got Scott Williams, uh, you know, inking Mark Silvestri. After this, uh, Silvestri would leave Homage Studios, form Top Cow, and Scott Williams pretty much exclusively would be Wildstorm. And then we got Brigade 1 and 2. So one of my long 
running criticisms of Image Comics is like really outside Spawn and Cyber Force. Because look, look, Cyber Force is cool. Cyber Force just has really cool looking villains, really cool looking guys. The last page here is 1000% all super villain. All, like, this is just goodness here. The Rob Liefeld and the Jim Lee villains, though, are the absolute, absolute worst. And this is our villain right here. This has nothing to do with the 90s. This is just poor planning. We got a little bit more of this guy. His name's Genocide. So, I don't know. Look, look I'm a big Marat Michaels fanboy. I own a couple pages from Brigade. So, yeah, like this, this holds something. But I kind of forgot about this, this Infinity, uh, one of four, and this continued in other extreme books or other image books. This continued in uh, Shadow of the Hulk number two. Completely forgot about that. So, I, it, you know, like, I'm very curious about Infinity, created by Eric Stevenson, who is now running the company. So let's really attack this stack, shall we? We're going to just do it piece by piece. Anything in the bag and board will get opened, will get released. Okay. Why did I? And I'm, I'm going to get into detail of why I bought some of these along the way. Walt Simonson, a thousand percent. Uh, you know, pivotal storyline. The apocalypse. Oh, look, we got Ronald, Ronald Reagan over here. The apocalypse run of. X Factor is one of my all time favorite stories. I love the original Four Horsemen. I believe that all the Four Horsemen were, uh, they're basically garbage outside of these four. Because, yeah, they, they made Wolverine and, and uh, you know, Psylocke's a Four Horsemen in, in the comic book. It just never, it just never really worked. But this is the best that X Factor ever was uh, up until the, the Peter David run. Like, we got to be honest, you know, like later. So it would take uh, X Factor blacked out for a while. I always buy any Rob Liefeld Captain America because I 1,000% support the Heroes Reborn Captain America. I just, it's too good. The artwork and the coloring is awesome. And it has the absolute best origin of Falcon. And then these, this, this was... I think th this was one of the more expensive comics. I, I paid about four bucks for this. So the reason why I'm buying the, the Supernaturals, we'll open this real quick, is because I'm still on the pretty deep Chaos Comics thread. This is for my YouTube channel. And, yeah, this is where we kind of had to cash in on these supernatural characters marvel really let some of the independent guys do them and this is brian polito doing this uh i believe there was four titles that he kind of um you know had his own little publishing house within marvel for uh i didn't dig around too much into this particular miniseries as you can see it's two or four but you can tell by by the jack-o-lantern this this is a marvel imprint marvel was doing multiple in inner company imprints at this time this is what kind of made the post image marvel a lot of fun so we have this so this is of course you guys you guys can already guess you'll see a lot of wildstorm here uh i need two more of these so wildcats x-men it was golden age modern age dark age and silver age the golden age is Travis Charis's absolute best drawn work ever. And guess what? The Silver Age, which I was able to score also this weekend, is Jim Lee's absolute best work. Now, I can't say the same for <laughs> for the next two. Now, uh, this one I was curious of how to open. The next two being Modern Age, Adam Hughes, and Matt Broom doing Dark Age. Here we go. So I'm a little curious on this because I'm not uh, little Gen 13, right? Or Gen 13, issue 13. Oh, okay. This is just a standard issue. 
different cover. So I think the 13th issue of Gen 13 had 13 separate covers. If I am not mistaken. All right. Standard fare. Uh, I guess I can keep this one in the bag. I buy all of these incentive covers as soon as I find them. Uh, you know, these, these sell for a little bit on eBay. Killer Instinct, Chapter 3, Wildcats, 7. So there was two of these. There was also a gold one for Wildcats, number one. I will be on the look after that. We got some really good stuff here. With the with this time being just I buy a lot of movie adaptations again for my YouTube channel because this is where we get stuff from the script and we actually sometimes get as as you'll see sometimes we get a different movie because not all the production stills are forwarded to the artist now who who drew this? Because the artwork is incredible. I feel like the best artists are on the movie adaptations. Because they're they're quick. They are capable. David Lloyd. Yeah. David Lloyd. John Stokes. This artwork is incredible. And we have New Mutants number 69. Because I always buy the 69 issue of anything I come across. Hey, oh, Futuro Comics in the house. Thanks for... Futuro... How are you doing? All right. Next stack. Like I said, we're, we're just going through it. <laughs> I I hate... Not only do I hate Doomsday Clock, uh, I hate... Yeah, I, I hate everything involving the non... Like, non-Watchmen. Except for the, the, the movie. I love the, the Zack Snyder movie. Now... To prove myself, look, right here on my bookshelf next to my table, I do have this, okay? Because I do believe that the Schneider take on Watchmen is the absolute best we'll ever have on feature film. And there are so many good things in this. This is also, look, David Finch. Uh, th this, this is an upcoming video for sure. Uh, I'm surrounded by Watchmen 24-7. I read Watchmen uh, basically year-round. I am all for that no one touches Watchmen but Alan Moore. So you can guess how I feel about the four Watchmen, Doomsday Clock, the HBO series, all that. So here we go. So th this was monumental. I got this right at the end of the show. Uh, this guy had it, I think, for five bucks. I overpaid because this is a mangled copy, but I don't care. I had this at one time next to my drawing table. This was a part of my permanent stack of books that I drew next to. And, yeah, I just got rid of it. Like, as a year's March start, this is for sure upcoming Wildstorm Wednesday. But, but do not discount. Do not deny that this is Jim Lee's singular absolute best work. He is on all cylinders for this issue. Not only that, the story works really well. This is one of Scott Lobdell's absolute best stories. When it comes to looking at things that are underrated, underappreciated, Wildstorm, Wildcats, X-Men, Silver Age, and Golden Age are their guarantees. Their guarantees. You cannot deny them. All right. As I said, we had a lot of upcoming Wildstorm backlash. Backlash always was one of my favorite Wildstorm characters. Originally, I think I only got five to six issues deep. We're going to do the whole run. We got some backlashes in here. Savage Dragon, early image, interconnecting everything. The early image stuff and the, the way that they were sharing the universe. Very cool. Very innovative. You know, very Marvel 60s. Here we go right here. We have a super young uh, Bright Booth here who's now doing X-Men Legacy. All right, so this book, everyone, this right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't want anything in Doomsday Clock to get retconned. I just want Doomsday Clock to disappear. The retcon I want for DC is to go back to pre-Flashpoint. Like, they did it for the animated movies for um, the Apocalypse War. 
just do it like that. They, they can go back to when it was awesome, to when it was good. That's a continuity that is, I don't know, like how, how you deny the pre-Flashpoint Batman and Green Lantern. You can roll in some of the, the New 52 stuff, but you really don't have to. And Justice League was a little bit on the roll, too, at that time, again. So this is over the edge. I said before, post-image Marvel was on an imprint binge, okay? Over the Edge was 99 cent introductions to some of your favorite characters. Robert Brown, okay? I did a video about Matt Martin, the, the guy that was once the future Tom McFarlane. This is the closest McFarlane riff and accuracy in rolling in McFarlane tropes that I have ever seen. This as a again a singular work might be the greatest McFarlane interpretation and this guy I tried to look him up he's not out there he's not there I don't know where you are Robert Brown but this guy had the mojo when it came to the McFarlane tropes I mean I don't know how he doesn't get onto Spider-Man at this point just put him on Spider-Man just do it We're in the 90s, people. Speaking of Watchmen, Alan Moore, Violator, Bad Rock. Jonathan Civil on the inks. Brian Denham, who's now running Antarctic Press, on the pencils. And we have the, the colorist, Eau Claire, who really wasn't around for Extreme Colors for long. We will complete this. We will discuss this. We will talk about this. And look, look, that guy right there, that's Pitbull. This is Bad Rock. You can you can see the Bad Rock influence in Pitbull. Speaking of Alan Moore, again, we have War Child. This was an Alan Moore book. This is World War Child what? Volume one. Yeah, I why did I think uh why did I think Alan Moore wrote War Child? Am I wrong? Maybe I'm wrong, but this has Chappy App. We love Chappy App. Again, do, do we have to talk? <laughs> they just never did villains right in early image, but the coloring for this is just phenomenal. Chappy App at his absolute best. This is Chappy App's best work. Uh, World War Child 1 through, through 3. This might be the latest one. I might have all these now, so we'll be doing something on that. Um, look, variant covers. I bought both, both of these. Look, everyone, when it comes pound, pound per pound, even during the X-Men days, Silvestri was superior over Jim Lee. Silvestri was the better craftsman. Silvestri's tropes uh, were more adapted by his contemporaries, even though a lot of people hacked Jim Lee's poses. Uh, we always will have to talk about Weapon Zero at Top Cow. I'm a big Weapon Zero guy. But the consistency of Silvestri trumps nearly everyone that came out of Image. We also have Wildstorm. Nine. So we have, look, we have uh, 9, 10, 11. So I buy this cover as many times as I've seen. I probably owned it 10, 15 times in my life. Eric Stevenson and Roger Cruz, Cruz who is the Joe Mad riff. If you're not familiar with Joe Mad, look him up. Roger Cruz was out of this Joe Mad school. But. These two in Kingdom were doing Young Blood better than Marvel was doing X Men, and there was a Young Blood X Men crossover, two two books that are absolutely phenomenal, a lot of fun. Art Art to Bear, black and white. We have to get this just just because it's Art to Bear. Uh, really cool character. You know, like he just brought this back in the crowdfunding. Great, great, great series. A whole lot of fun. Our, we got a, another lesson with Art to Bear coming up. So we're going to put this to the side because there's there's a big discussion point coming up. Oh, wow. <laughs> Cyber Force 11. Again, Mark Silvestri, just like, you know, at the reins here, rocking and rolling. Uh, when it comes to good, consistent coloring outside of Spawn, everything was what Silvestri was doing. Silvestri had the better character set, the better villain set, the better production house and clearly better coloring 
next to spawn when it comes to these days of image. Medieval spawn, Witchblade, Garth Ennis, right? Garth Ennis, David Wall. Not too bad. They, I say David Wall as editor because David Wall came in to Witchblade and carried Witchblade through its, uh, what I would call like its second generation. And this is probably Brandon Peterson's absolute best work next to Mystic from Top Cow. Not Top Cow, Cross Gen. So feel free, look that up. Uh, highly underrated series there. Battlestone, Team 7, okay, we got to talk about this. Eternity Comics was really big with these uh, Chromium covers. I mean, for an independent company that did parody books, they were, they were heavy on Zen Intergalactic Ninja. Uh, Aster was another book. I don't know. Cat Studios. I was just really into just just this cover alone, everyone. I mean, look at that. How, how do you not love it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Silvestri, uh, look, right here, speaking of Silvestri, Brandon Peterson again, but Silvestri's books during this time of image is highly, like, it's overlooked, it's underrated. Everybody wants to focus on the late books, uh, and I would say, like, you know, the Rob Liefeld stuff gets a lot of attention even now. Codename Strike Force was a legit book. But still, we have, like, the B team, penciling, coloring, inking. And Silvestri's B team is far better than what Liefeld's B team was. You know, I would argue it was better than even Wildstorm's B team at the time. Wildstorm eventually took over when it came to round the clock overall production and output but i really would say you can kind of see why there was a break between sylvester and jim lee just a power struggle okay so the kindred so here's the big mistake i thought kindred was a sequel to i can't remember that as a sequel to the backlash uh series but no it, it was Backlash appeared in, I think, Stormwatch is issue three. He's like the trainer. He's like the seasoned veteran superhero. He trains all the new superheroes. He was popular. They gave him Kindred. They put him with Grifter. You got Lynch over here. Smart move. And then he was so popular from this, he got his own series. That series went on to Wildcore. He actually uh, got his own team again. Warblade Species, Deadliest Species. The incredible Scott Clark here. Whenever Scott Clarks are in a Wildstorm book, we buy it. Scott Clark too also had a legit run on Marvel's Alpha Flight while everything was integrating, while Wildstorm was getting you know flirted around at Marvel at one time. It really did look like Wildstorm was folding to Marvel Comics at one time. We get rid of our bag, so I had to get this. This was big. We're just going to scoot this over. We're just going to do like side by side McFarlane's because during this time, this year for for Shadowhawk, they they must have just let like Valentino use whatever of the image characters they needed to boost Shadowhawk sales. Because within a like a year, I believe it's Pit, Savage Dragon, Spawn, uh, and Chapel. Like you know, Shadowhawk got to. Yeah, was used in every single way possible to boost sales. And then we have what? John Clearly, right? John Clearly finished art over Jim Valentino doing his McFarland impression. And this is, a, a, too, another legit McFarland riff. This is a great issue. I uh, So there's some of this. I really have to see where we at. Shadowhawk 7. So Shadowhawk was monthly, but it was originally three separate miniseries. And then there was Shadowhawk being Pyrola, which spun out of like the like the Shadowhawk continuity is very curious. Uh we'll also put this aside for another comment. And then here we go. We got backlash. So this blew me away over this. Look at that. Now I still have to say the Wildstorm villains, come on. The, the villains don't pop ever as good as the heroes. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, Glyphold praising Sebastri, it, it's dead on. I believe that's, like, that's a little bit of a of a story recon. It wasn't like that back in the day. Uh, it, everyone's kind of ganged up to praise Sebastri now, which is 100% true, though. Sebastri always was the just the better guy. Um, I'm going to start this run. Uh, McFarlane did a run of Marvel Tales covers. Uh, strictly phenomenal. I think it's some some of his best illustration and graphic design work. This Dazzler one was always one of my favorites. I never owned it, and it blew me away that the guy had it for like two three dollars. I think he gave it to me for free because I was spending so much money at his booth. So here we go, people. We're not even point five through the stack yet. So. Talking about the confusion of Shadowhawk, this is a Shadowhawk monthly. This is a Shadowhawk monthly. This potentially is volume one, even though he's had three mini series up until this point. And then this is volume two. Uh, and I don't think it's the same guy. So I don't know anything about this at all. So it clearly had to get it. So <laughs> here we go. Oh my God. People, people. Are we familiar with Bruce and Babes? This is serious stuff here. This is serious stuff. Spawning out, pun intended, coming out of Wizard Magazine. Bart Sears, probably one of the influential, probably the most in, in influential article through Wizard Magazine. He did Bruce and Babes, and he, he gave you his two cents. His methodology, his philosophy on illustration. That was so popular. You, you know, like you can kind of see this route that he would get investors and people interested, probably all linked through Wizard Magazine. You know, like that's how money works. Money always like shakes each, each other's hand. Eight, eight tablet monument set, 16 pages of dynamic full color artwork, including graphic, eight page ominous prologue, monument one. So, I believe there was an alpha and an omega of this format. Now, I say format because I don't know if you can see. Okay? See? Everything. <laughs> they call them tablets. But they're cards. So this is the cover and back cover. We have Amy Smith here, uh, who is currently running uh, First Man, right? Crowdfunding for that. So go, go get that on Indiegogo. And here we go. Look at these. Okay. This is the comic. Eight page origin. It's okay. And and they're they're numbered. So here's the cool thing. We we rip apart these villains a lot. But look at his villains for brute and babes. Bart Sears used to design action figures. You tell me that these guys don't look better than anything we've seen from the image books already. Okay, let the guy who's designing action figures outdo you. Incredible. Look, look at Night Beast here. Incredible design work. The people that don't honor Boots and Babes from the article to this, they're lying. They're you know they're taking that stupid high horse and trying to sound like they are educated, thought out, and whatever. Okay, so some of these are from my buddy Mark who he will go around and he does some of my shopping because I'm busy. And he's also way more obsessive about this than I am. Again, we're not, we don't care about bags and boards. For Wildstorm Wednesday, may I present Wildcats Aliens. Guess what this is the number one of? This is the greatest crossover in comic book history. I'm not even going to crack it open. I, I, I can do this right now. I know the story through and through. You will have to wait for a Wildstorm Wednesday for that. I've been building and building and building the same Keith stack. Uh, I was so happy when you found this. This is same Keith's Marvel Comics Presents on glossy paper. Okay, Marvel Comics Presents is newsprint. Uh, we'll be doing the same Keith deep dive either on here or YouTube. So I'm really big on all crossovers because I think crossovers 
help define how good and how well uh, concepts are and how well lawyers can deal with those concepts. Hulk Pitt, Peter David, Dale Keown. Uh, this might be the the last time Dale Keown was Dale Keown. He was still with Full Bleed Studios. The Dale Keown now, I don't know. I, I can't get behind him. But you can look at some of the, like, the straight up hatching for this. Okay? I mean, like, right here. Okay? I mean, uh, going right into the work I'm doing now, guys. Again, big discussion point. It's a crossover. This was probably probably best for YouTube. Who Who is inking this? Dan, Mr. Panosian inker. Berserker. Okay? Berserkers from the pages of Youngblood, Dane Fraga. Uh, Dane Fraga's rise is very similar to J. Sky Campbell, but J. Sky Campbell, uh, when it comes to time frame, was just another level above Fraga. When, yeah, when they got into the swing of things, but Berserkers, I prefer Berserkers over Black Flag because I believe this has just better detail, inking, and rendering. Black Flag, to me, a lot of it is a disappointment. So here's here's a cool joke. I, I posted this before, but I keep buying it. Demon Storm Caliber Press, Tom McFarlane cover. So that's cool. All right. So some of these I can just go through. We don't have to flip them. Spotlight. Sweet Downfall from Scout Comics. Yeah, what? So... We're going to have to flip through this real quick. So here's the funny thing. Uh, you guys want investment ideas? You, you guys want to build a stack of comics for a few dollars and sell it for 30, 40 bucks a year from now on eBay? Look into the Ultraverse. Ultraverse had a legit run. It was the writer's version of Image Comics. And this is Norm Brayfogle drawing Prime. Prime is another version of Shazam, but Prime is way cooler than Shazam. This company later was bought by Marvel, and they just buried the characters. Um, some of, like, it was an intercompany crossover. Some of the, myth uh, the mythology of the Infinity Stones comes from the Ultraverse crossover. But we also have this being drawn by Norm Brayfogle, who is, in my opinion, Maybe the second greatest Dark Knight Batman artist to ever live. R.I.P. He's no longer with us. This was a find. So the investment opportunity here is finding Ultraverse books now in the cheap bins. It doesn't exist. It's really hard to dig up Ultraverse books. Same with Chaos Comics. So we have Dragon Slayer here. So if you're not familiar with Dragon Slayer, it's a George Lucas produced movie. This is the movie adaptation. Highly, 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 highly underrated awesomeness, this movie. The way that this movie shot, Dennis O'Neill, Marie Saverin is the artist. This is very basic for its time. But we still have all the disciplines of panel-to-panel -panel storytelling that is as important as you know these adaptations are. It's these adaptations pay off more when you know the movie through and through. Okay, and I believe this was three issues and also released as a magazine size edition. Blood pool. So here's here's one of the tropes. Early Image all had their versions of the New Mutants. We know the New Mutant idea or like the Teen Titans. You're a Teen Titan, then you join the Justice League. You're a New Mutant, then you join the X-Men. All the Image like team franchises, including Wildcats, had their version of New Mutants. Young Blood's version of the New Mutants was Blood Pool. These guys are part of the Blood Pool and eventually they get selected and they join Young Blood. We have a very young Pat Lee here. Uh, Pat Lee was Jim Lee's best young discovery. And you can kind of tell just from this. You can tell from the coloring. You can tell from the line work and the detail. 
Pat Lee later went to go change the game of licensed comics with Dreamwave and the Transformers comic book. So Pat Lee kind of created the boom that led to what's coming up for Wildstorm Wednesday, the Wildcats Wildstorm licensed book by Ed McGinnis. So this was four issues, and I believe Task, uh, eventually Task and Soul here, both become a part of Youngblood. Uh, yeah, and part of one of the better runs of Youngblood also. Uh, we buy this just for the cover. Blackout. Uh, my buddy Mark gave me this. Mike Magnola cover here. My, Mike Magnola sketch. Major find here, the Chaos Bible. We know I'm big on Chaos Comics. It's, it's hard to find a little bit of the documented process within the walls of Chaos. Th this is one of your clues to that because you actually get articles like this in here. And, you know, like figuring out how chaos worked is a little, it's tough. It's tough to dig up some of this material uh, at the time. But the Chaos Bible is really a production guide to the company. This is worth, like, this is just worth a lot to me. All right, people. Uh, right now happening on Indiegogo, Shelby Robertson is doing 1984. This is Shelby's absolute, right here, penciled by Shelby, from... The School of Liefeld Extreme Studios. This is Shelby's absolute best work at the time. I will argue that this is Shelby's absolute best work in his history. He's still going today. Uh, his growth is phenomenal. This is, uh, I saw this, I busted a nutty nut because I had to have it. I really did. Uh, great purchase for what, 25 cents? Uh, we're just going to let this one go. We don't need to discuss that. All right. We're making our way through this. I think I believe we're kind of in a little bit. We're we'll in a little bit of a wild storm thread here. So I was just saying the blood pool team one storm watch is this other trope where they did the first versions of these teams. It was team one uh, operation night strike for extreme studios. Um, Chapel being a part of. You know, Al Simmons' uh, Strike Force team pre spawn. Again, another big trope training program. These guys later become Stormwatch. We, we have Rob, Rob Liefeld's Love Letter to Lobo. Uh, you know, this, uh, Andy Mengels here, uh, TV writer, real production guy. Uh, I, back in the day, I had correspondence with him. I believe I still have a pitch package from him. And, you know, this is as good as anything Lobo was putting out at the time. It delivers all the Lobo tropes. Uh, some of the better Extreme Studios coloring at the time. Really good stuff. Nightmare, Marat Michaels, more Extreme Studios. Uh, here we go. Rocking and rolling. How do you not love that image? This also had one amazing Chromium cover. Uh, I will have that one of these days. Again. But... The cool thing to note with Marat Michaels is that he kind of became like a, you know, like a TNA guy. Look at this pose here from this girl. I mean, completely unacceptable by today's standards. But, you know, you got to show, show the booty and you got to do the, the butt cheeks hanging out. I bought this a few times. Savage Namor or Namor the Submariner 34. We are in Prime Marvel J. Lee here, pre going to Image, working on. Young Blood and Wildcats, and later uh, Hellstorm, right? Hellshock, which would be his little nod to James R. Barr and the Crow. We buy these as soon as, soon as we see them. We got more backlash. Another Blood Blood Wolf. Um, Glory. So here, here's the cool thing. At one time, Rob Liefeld, when he was, when they were working on Alan Moore was writing and Chris Bruce was drawing Supreme. Supreme was better than anything DC was doing with Superman. We can contrast that with Joe Duffy and Mike Donato Jr. out doing DC with Wonder Woman. These books and Mike Donato Jr. did also draw Wonder Woman. But I will say this, the Extreme Studios glory is way better at the time than DC's Wonder Woman. 
And I believe they might even had John Byrne trying to revamp Wonder Woman at the time, unsuccessfully. I love source books. I love anything like this. A lot of people, look, quick, 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 quick side note. Quick side note. I see a lot of people out there who want to be like the next comic book super creator. And you guys do source books without doing the comic. And I'm not sure how that works. Let your source books, your who's who, come way after the books. Because you need a run of comics, of good comics, period, before we even get into the need of a source book. Speaking of Mike Donato Jr., speaking of Wonder Woman, we have Artemis. Donato Jr. really was... Uh, we have Ed Bennis here. Mike Den oh, oh, Ed Bennis cover. I'm sorry. Ed Bennis drew this. Okay. Well, I bought it anyway. Wonderful. I mean, come on. Wonderful illustrations here. Like I said, I bought a few of these. We buy all crossovers. Witchblade, she. And then we're at prime time <laughs> Mark Silvestri, who completely decimates Everyone from Image at this point. What year? 1995. By 95, Silvestri's craftsmanship and artistry completely shatters his contemporaries. I would say consistently, Silvestri at this point is the best in the industry. Uh, FYI, I always hated this cover. Hated it. Uh, I buy all adaptations, so I, ju I just had to get this only because I, there's I, nothing came to mind, and I'm like, I gotta read this. I don't know if it's an adaptation of like the first episode. Uh, I just, I just gotta do it. In Indiana Jones Chronicles, Image X over, Eric Larson drawing Wildcats, all the cool Eric Larson tropes, all the cool Jim Lee tropes. So we had to get that. Uh, so this is a little bit of. Upcoming commentary for Wildstorm. Wildstorm got into being too productive. They got too good at their own game, and their their goal was to publish books, whatever that means, right? But they sacrificed so much. We got Amy Smith, you know, Barcia's contemporary, pinned up here. Too much. Um, a lot of this had to get like they had to slow it down. They really did for any of this to work. The stories, uh, the the page to page, panel to panel, story wise, was always better than the artwork. And this became a theme with a lot of Wildstorm books. They got too good at their own game. Uh, we buy any Wells Portacio at this point, who following Jim Lee, perfect match as Larson was to follow McFarlane on Spawn. Really nice stuff. Uh, he was so artful with these wide open backgrounds here, wide open paneling. See, a lot of negative space, but it just, everything always worked. Hellshock, Jay Lee, we just spoke about this. Uh, I never liked the coloring for this. I felt like it should have been recovered. Uh, Dynamite might may have recolored this. Chris Claremont, Coming back, to, yeah, like, right, there was no rivalry. People always want to act like there was something. No, no, no. Chris Claremont got a lot of money from Jim Lee and Mark Silvestri, both doing separate runs and crossover runs of Cyber Force and Wildcats. Again, we have a villain problem, but look at, look, look at this right here. Boom. Like, Jim Lee, again, not at his best, but Jim Lee's rocking and rolling. Brigade 14. Uh... It can't say too much about this. I never read it, never owned it. Now I do. Uh, cross hatching masonry here. X Force Nine uh, might be. Yeah, this actually might be my favorite issue of X Force because it's got Mark Pasilla coming in at the end. Uh, you know, Dane ben Dane Penosian is credited, but the clear artist towards the back of this is Mark Pasilla. Not Rob Liefeld. Inter like interesting. I I always love this cover though. 
I don't know why. I just love the, the shirtless shatter shot. Yeah, like this blew my mind as a kid seeing Cable Cable's face in its uh, Terminator form. And great pose for Domino, by the way. So here we go, everyone. We got something big. Wildstorm Rising. Uh, I, I may have... I don't know if I'm if I have them all. But it's 12 chapters, I believe, right? Is it 10 or 12 chapters? It might be 12. It might be 14. Because there's an epilogue and prologue. Okay, the end. So we're done here. So it might be 12 total. But look, look they're pushing these uh, Wildstorm Gallery cards pretty hard. Wildstorm Rising, Chapter 10. So Wildstorm Rising... The, the issue itself was chapters one and two, and then it rained through the Wildstorm universe. So every title got its own part. And then there was a prologue and epilogue. Um, this was like a big paycheck for Bat Barry Windsor Smith, who was getting into doing some of his own stuff, Paradox Man. The chapter one of this is all drawn by BWS, and it is some of his coolest work. His style doesn't hit with all of the uh, Wildstorm characters. It doesn't. We have Wildstorm Rising Prologue here. Team 7. Chuck Dixon. Uh, yeah, this is some of Dixon's... Dixon just had, like, a... He's still on, on the run, but uh, he, he was, in my opinion, really hot at this time. Image X over month. Young Blood 9. This is a Jim Valentino issue. Writer penciler, Dane Fraga Inker. Cool stuff. Again, see, Team One Wildcats. Uh, we're just we're in love with version one uh <laughs> version one versions of these teams. More Warblade and Dangerous Species. I mean, come on, like look at that. Never read this. Steve Seagull, artwork by Scott Clark. We got more backlash, more Codename Strike Force. This issue here is oh, okay. It's Young Blood Nine, different cover. And then we have some of the Roger Cross, Eric, oh, Todd Nux, Eric Stevenson, Team Young Blood. We have Aster here, as I was mentioning earlier. Fantastic Chromium cover, e Eternity. Twenty One by Top Cow. Uh, clear movie pitch here. Profit Five, Team Seven. Three, Wildcats 21. This became the paradigm shift. This is the Alan Moore era. Travis Charis. So we talked about this already. Uh, Travis Charis pretty much made his career off of a, a few choice issues of Wildcats. Codename Strike Force 10. Really cool stuff. Billy Tane. Uh, Billy Tane right here. Has one one amazing Instagram account when it comes to artwork. Go follow him. Backlash eleven. If you say you haven't guessed what the uh, theme is, do I need to point it out? Why why do all the wild storm villains just look the same? I don't know. All right, so these ones, I I was able to jump in a little bit on a thread here. So I got this for like 50% off. This is one of my all-time favorite penciled, like penciled coloring Christian Litcher. Litchner did the coloring for this. This is Ultimates 3. This broke this along with the Ultimates, David Finch, Jeff Loeb miniseries. This kind of destroyed the Ultimate Universe, took away the cool factor. Scarlet Witch gets killed. And then Magneto goes crazy in the next miniseries, which is Ultimate, right? Or Ultimato. I'm sorry, Ultimato. Uh, who killed Scarlet Witch? So the story, yeah, you know, we can argue about the story. We can argue that this led to the complete destruction of the Ultimate universe. But it's drawn by Joe Mad, and Joe Mad is this crazy cat here, from fresh from the Marvel mailroom. Joe Mad really took over the industry and became a new standard when it comes to and this this is I'm sorry this is a Tom Grummet here we go well we have it here issue what's it 330 this is Joe Mad's uh, absolute 
best issue. 328. Okay. So this is Joe Mad getting inked by Tim Townsend. This, in my opinion, is the last great artist to touch X-Men, the last great X-Men era. Uh, he did a lot of fun things, awesome Spider-Man issue. They go into the Orient, you know, the every like you know, like Joe Mag was really into anime. They go into outer space, like really cool stuff. I, I do have like the Orient issue here. They go to Japan, just really hot stuff. But so I was able to get a decent Joe Mad stack. Uh, Joe Mad also was one of the minds behind Age of Apocalypse. So he did four issues of that. I, I believe. I believe. Roger Cruz was Cruz was coming in and helping him. But Joe Mad was a penciling machine. Um, could not keep a monthly schedule later to do Battle Chasers. So this begins by Joe Mad X Men stack. Um, I would say he did maybe twice as much as this because he never did more than two issues at, at one time. So we got that. That's good. That's a lot of fun. People were nearing an end here. I thought we were going to be like two hours. How did he get this? How did he get this? Doomsday Squad. Look, look, it's all chewed up. But buy these whenever you see them. They're essentially worthless. But it is early... John Byrne. Okay. It's just John Byrne drawing. He's still drawing. I mean, you have to always focus on John Byrne. If you care about storytelling, if you care about like comic booking, care about John Byrne. So, let's see what we have here. Reagan's Raiders. Everyone knows I'm a big Ronald Reagan guy. You got this. So, all right. We need to get into this right now. J JLA Cyberforce. With this completely sketched cover by Sylvester. This is not one of Sylvester's best. Doug Manick, who's still in the game, did the artwork. This was a part of a pretty good collaboration between DC and Top Gal. Again, the, the age of crossovers, this... These guys did good. Doug Manick, more than capable. Joe Kelly, more than capable. Joe Kelly goes on to create Ben 10, Man of Action. Guy's a millionaire at this point. Really cool stuff, people. I never read this, but you can see it goes all in on the concepts. Just look at the colors and have a good time. Uh, really looking forward to reading this. Wow. Rip Paul just becomes a giant monster with uh, almost like duplicate versions of himself. Uh, I hope that's like a multiverse channel, because if it's not multiverse, it's not DC. I want my DC to have tons of multiverse. Okay, so this is the big one. This kind of sometimes goes for like decent dollar on eBay. This was a cheap dollar issue. Look, look, it's like falling apart. These are from my reviews. This is probably one of the most important movie adaptations to track down for the reason that the character designs did not make it into this. Okay? So what does that mean? What like what, what am I really saying? Well, you get the kind of experience the Masters of the Universe movie with, with you know, the uh, designs you would want. With the look of the characters you would want. I, I'm curious on going through this to see, number one, what was in the script and let out of the movie. Because these are from the script, not from the movie. And to see if I have a little bit different of a of an effect reading this, because the designs and the optics are as different as they are in the movie. This was an absolute gem find. Um, absolute. One of my friends right here. Look, you guys, you guys want to see the mark that I'm always referencing? He's he's in here. When he was younger, here we go. Mark Leone, Defford, New Jersey. Okay? So, we're real comic book people. Reagan's Raiders, we don't have to open that. So, here we go. I previously bought this. And it was... A, it's I bought like a 3D version. So, here. We got all three versions of Gen X, Gen 13, which is probably the most appropriate of any crossover. Wildstorm was really pushing these 3D 
uh, some of those X Men Wildcats are also in 3D. So these are 3D. I guess maybe they were selling. I don't really know. I don't really know. But here we go. This is why we 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 care about this. It's Arthur Adams, everyone. Arthur Adams drawing two teen superhero. 90s, you know, popular. Remember, uh, Gen X got a made for TV movie. Probably the, the two biggest teen superhero books at the time teaming up. And I don't know, a complete, complete home run. Uh, this might be uh, just collectively one of the best single issues that Wildstorm ever put together. So bravo for them just as a, a production house. All right, people, we're, we're just about at the end of the stack. Stephen Platt profit cover right here. Not one of my favorite covers. I'm one of his best. Uh, we have a shout out. It looks like we got Rob Liefeld, um, maybe John Sybil here. We got some Extreme Studios bullpen people on the cover. Sober 4 7. Not familiar with this, but look, I love this opening page. And look at that. Look at Impact. Again, Top Cow on the next level. One of the better image comic uh, gimmicks by Extreme Studios, and this was exclusive to Extreme Studios, Baywatch. Uh, they gender-swapped all the characters in 1995. Gen 13, because uh, we're tracking Wildstorm. Another backlash, Wildstorm Rising. What works, Wildstorm Rising. I flipped through this one. And was completely disappointed with the Los Portacio, um positioning here with, with the pencils. Didn't work as well as that issue of the X-Men we already saw. Got two of these. The McFarlane Cyberforce X-Over issues. Hunter Keller, because I'm curious. Uh, I, this might have been a Kickstarter. I, maybe that was on Kickstarter. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But we have Kenneth Rocking Craft. Rocking and Rolling. Uh, he was like one of the last guys that once he emerged, I was really enamored by his style. Also, one incredible Instagram account, too. So, we're blessed to have that. More Gen 13. Uh, Spartan. Look, this is what I'm talking about. Look, we can look at this Gen 13, and it's really not as exciting as, as the earlier Wildstorm books, just optically. Like flipping through it. You buy this out of habit. Running by Gail Simone is top tier though. Because she is funny and is a Gen 13, so it should be funny. And we have Kurt Busiak, who was the best team writer. Uh post heroes who born Avengers and George Perez, the best Avengers run, I believe. But you can tell by the optics, we're not in a Wildstorm comic. We really don't care. I still want to read this curious. Um you know, Stormwatch Special 2. Uh, this was another image gimmick. Image had good good gimmicks. So they did their 25. So a lot of the image comics, it was Stormwatch. I believe it was Stormwatch, Blood Strike. I'm forgetting some of the other ones, but they jumped ahead to issue 25 so you could see what the future would hold. And then this would reverse engineer it from there on. And this was like Battalion Sun, uh, you know, basically having somewhat of a last stand. And this also, too, somewhat goes into Wildcats Aliens. Important stuff here. Uh, I wish I had a little bit more info. Also, Ron Lim does not fit. He's the guy from Infinity Gauntlet and Silver Surfer from the 90s. Ron Lim, clearly one of the best Silver Surfer artists of all time. I think he's number one. He never really found his stride post Silver Surfer. So he doesn't fit. Okay, we got more Wildcats. Wildstorm Rising Chapter 1. So this is what I was talking about earlier. This is the Barry Windsor Smith drawn issue that is phenomenal. The coloring phenomenal. Uh, look, the Weapon X, his his Marvel Comics presents Weapon X gave him money from Valiant. Gave him money from Image. Uh, he used a lot of that money. Uh, Rune from, again, Malibu from the Ultraverse. Uh, he was able to have a true like resurgence in his career 
calls, you know, like he was the an artist for the artist. Wonder Man number one. We got this baby just for the cover. Uh, this is this was the only <laughs> Ultraverse book I was able to dig up. So tell me I'm crazy. Tell me I'm crazy. These books aren't percolating. The Nightman, uh, who also became just did become a TV series. I think it ran 13 episodes. And yes, we will discuss that. And then here we go. So we're going full circle. Uh, wow, didn't intend that. So the reason why we focus on Art to Bear's black and white is because, comparatively speaking, we kind of have black and white. We have a book called Wild Storm by Jerry Ordway, where the, like somewhat the veterans, the guys that have been in the game, got their shot at Image Comics. Because you could buy yourself into Image Comics. This book is legit. Black and White's a good book. But when Jim Lee left X-Men, Art Taber came in. And I'm still surprised to this day. Maybe one day he can answer me. But I'm so surprised that Art Taber didn't get the book. Because when I bought this as a kid, I thought it was Jim Lee. And I go through it and I like I read it. And it's it's art to bear. And it blew my mind that he could like again, you, you can tell it's not Jim Lee. But as a kid, this was Jim Lee. I couldn't believe that someone could draw that close to Jim Lee without being Jim Lee. It blew my mind. So Art to Bear signing it, uh, you know, wrapping it up. So everyone. I don't want to remind you, try by fire, Uzi Susie. All right, we got some Uzi Susie trading cards here. You get these with Etsy. I'm trying to create a little bit of a thing when it comes to when you purchase products and comic books through me. I'm really trying to create an overall experience. Everyone, over one hour, rock and roll. Thanks for hanging out. Until next time, uh, cheers. I love you.